so we are on the way and have gotten the attention of a lot of uh, larger companies to move here. And um, our co-producer, uh, Carnegie Mellon, represented by Dean Andrew Moore, is now going to lead a panel up here of uh, companies who've moved to Pittsburgh. So uh, this is, thank you very much, Paul, for, where are you, Paul? Where did Paul go? There you are. That was awesome. That was just so awesome. We, we're going to take every one of those things, and we're going to make it happen. And I really, really loved your counterintuitive stuff. Uh, one thing that's going to happen, we are not going to adopt all of your California things that are going on. Oh, at least I've got a working mic now. So. Uh, I used to work for uh, a Silicon Valley-based company here in Honest Pittsburgh. Whenever we went out for big executive meetings, they wanted to do 5.30 a.m. yoga sessions, which is just insufferable. That's never, ever going to happen. As I say, when we have big executive meetings here, we'll jump in a pickup truck, go shoot squirrels for a while, then we come back <laughs> and do our uh, Silicon Valley schmoozing. Anyway. Uh, uh, I'm really pleased to announce uh, or to, to moderate a wonderful session on Pittsburgh as a magnet, where some of the many heroic people who have been involved on the technology side of our big joint effort of making Pittsburgh awesome uh, have many ideas and thoughts about what it is about this place which is really helping us grow on the technology side. And I'm going to uh, introduce you uh, one at a time, starting furthest from me. Uh, I'd like you to each just give a little, a couple of words and thoughts about what you think makes Pittsburgh a magnet, and then we'll go around and have a little bit of a further discussion. Uh, we will have a few minutes for uh, questions from the floor uh, after we've had a bit of a discussion amongst ourselves. So let me first introduce Tony Stentz, one of the people who's brought to the world the uh, technology of autonomous vehicles. He was part of the group responsible for the successful growth of the Robotics Institute, so that now Pittsburgh is the World Center for Robotics. Uh, so he's done amazing things with his career. And right now, he's right in the thick of things uh, at Uber's new uh, technology center here in Pittsburgh. So Tony, what do you think uh, makes Pittsburgh a magnet? Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I, I, I can talk about what uh, makes uh, Pittsburgh attractive to Uber. Uh, and I would say that really proximity to technically strong universities like Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh is is a primary reason. Uh, let me speak to the impact of CMU because, as Andrew said, I was at CMU. So uh, Carnegie Mellon is uh, very strong in robotics. It's strong in artificial intelligence and computer science and, and really all of the engineering disciplines. And it, it uh, has very much a uh, focus on applied research and a, a focus on system building and it, it has a, uh, a proven track record for uh, transferring technology out into industry. And, and then also it, of course, uh, produces people. And uh, in addition to uh, faculty members that go on leave and, and come over and work at Uber, there are, of course, uh, graduating students. And Uber is very interested in graduates at all levels, bachelor's, master's, and PhD. Very good. Thanks, Tony. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Kamal Nigam. Uh, he was one of the co-founders of the Google Pittsburgh office, which, uh, as you can see, uh, if you've ever been through East Liberty, is growing substantially. Uh, it is an extremely successful uh, Google office, uh, and uh, Kamal's been right at the center of it. Uh, he apparently kicked someone recently, so his uh, <laughs> leg is broken, but that's just his management style. So, what do you think, Kamal? Thanks, Andrew. So, uh, you know, we do a lot of hiring of software engineers and technical folks, and originally we were hiring primarily in the Pittsburgh market, which, as Tony said, was such an important, uh, having that technical talent here in Pittsburgh was so critical to getting us off the ground. But we, now, actually, we're hiring a significant minority of people who are coming to Pittsburgh for the very first time, or even coming to the U.S. for the very first time. And one of the ways in which I have those conversations with candidates is to talk about my own personal quality of life living in Pittsburgh, right? So I, you know, I walk to work, I walk to play tennis, most of the time, right? <laughs> uh, you know, it's super easy for me to get my family around. 
Uh, there's a really nice restaurant vibe here. All of those sorts of um, things that make me so excited to be here in Pittsburgh are things that are just so easy to convince other people to come to Pittsburgh, right? It's, I tell people, you know, if you're the type of person who has to be in New York or you have to be in LA, you better go to New York or LA, right? But if otherwise, you should come to Pittsburgh. It's just one of the best small cities around. Thank you. Very good. Next, I'm going to introduce uh, Vanessa Jameson. Uh, Vanessa uh, is an ex-Googler engineer who has uh, started up a very exciting new uh, company in the world of family tech here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so I will say that when I started working at Google, I was in the Bay Area, and when I was a 25 to 29 year old, I moved to Pittsburgh, <laughs> and, um, and I noticed a lot of the lifestyle changes that, um, that Paul had mentioned. Um, but I think, you know, being in, in family tech, uh, Pittsburgh, I, I think a lot of people don't realize Pittsburgh is maybe one of the top places to be for that, you know, because it is such a family friendly, friendly city, um, it's just embedded in the, the culture here. I think probably the parks system has a, a lot to do with that. Um, so, uh, so the combination of the family friendly city and the, you know, great tech culture um, has led to companies like, you know, Four Moms, Forever.com, and then a bunch of uh, smaller companies, you know, Turtle Mill, um, uh, Little Helper, Covey is my company. <laughs> Lots of little examples like that, um, that have created a, a vibrant, um, you know, um, uh, family tech startup scene here. Very good. Yes, I think this is, actually makes sense. Uh, next, Hannah and Alexander. Uh, you are, are a perfect example of someone who went through Carnegie Mellon and came up with a really innovative idea in uh, power uh, or foot 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 powered electricity uh, and taken it out to form a startup company here and happily you have not yet disappeared off to the coast. What do you think is <laughs> right. good about Pittsburgh? And we don't plan to either. So um, yeah, I'm 25. Uh, I came to Pittsburgh to um, go to Carnegie Mellon and, and stayed. So uh, my company actually uh, is Soul Power. We create wearable energy harvesting devices. Um, and we've sort of used every single resource that Pittsburgh had to offer. Um, so just to list a couple of them uh, right off the bat, Project Olympus um, doesn't use words like entrepreneurship and innovation too much, but it's a uh, Carnegie Mellon incubator. Um, so faculty, students, alumni go there for uh, mentoring support, for office space. I literally slept on the floor for months, you know, <laughs> as a student working on, on the company. Um, and they coached us to get into Alpha Lab. Uh, which is a, a local accelerator, um, office space, uh, investment, um, mentoring as well. Um, and then we also have a uh, tech shop, um, which uh, sort of acts like a gym membership that's a lot more fun. Um, you, you basically pay a monthly fee and you get access to everything from an injection molder to a water jet to tools. So for hardware companies, um, and, and many, many hardware companies do come out of Carnegie Mellon, um, that's a, a really valuable resource. Um, and then also, just locally, there's a lot of access to, to manufacturers. So um, a lot of great resources for, for younger people doing hardware and other uh, uh, innovative uh, companies uh, coming out of Carnegie Mellon. Very good, yes. Uh, finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Yasser Sheikh, uh, professor at Carnegie Mellon, uh, very famous around the world for his ability to reconstruct uh, three-dimensional scenes from two-dimensional images. And he is currently uh, starting up a uh, a new uh, development for Oculus. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so as some of you may know, uh, Oculus is shipping the first consumer, or already has started shipping the first consumer VR uh, device. But within the company, there's an understanding that you know the real potential of VR needs us to solve many fundamental research problems. And one of those problems is, as Andrew mentioned, computer vision, which is what uh, we specialize in. And, and the choice of Pittsburgh was, was an obvious choice because I mean, at the risk of sounding a bit immodest, you know, we have the best, the world's best computer vision group, which I'm privileged to be uh, a part of. Uh, and that's why Pittsburgh was the obvious choice. Um, since we've started, actually, there, there are many things that, that are interesting to me about that decision because um, uh, a lot of people from the medical community have approached me about um, uh, collaborations uh, in VR, uh, in the entertainment industry, art, artists, um, uh, book writers, uh, in the gaming industry, and there's such an interest because this is a new this is a new uh, area that's just come up in the last year or two. But there, but you know, Pittsburgh is this, this city with energy and, and movement, and there's already a lot of uh, a lot of sub communities that have formed here. And I think that's one symptom of uh, of a city in ascent and with energy. So, 
that's what I think. Very good, yes. So I think these are all things which are joining together to make things uh, very good for us in Pittsburgh. Paul mentioned some of the things we have to watch out for. And I'd like to get your, your feedback. If uh, the city government or all the other partners in Pittsburgh were want, wanted to hear what us tech folks really need right now, uh, what do you think are some of the issues that we're still facing and we want to, we want to go, go against if we're eventually going to crush Portland? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, that uh, um, unfortunately, there's still this ongoing misconception that Pittsburgh is a city in decline, that, that it's polluted, that it's dominated by the steel industry. Of course, all you have to do is get those people to come to Pittsburgh, and, and those uh, mm -hmm. misconceptions are quickly dispelled. So somehow, I think uh, we have to get the message out. We've got to communicate to the world that this, this, this city is fantastic. It's, it's really uh, a land of opportunity, uh, so to speak. So I feel like when I first came to Pittsburgh 20 years ago, it was really common, like you would walk around the street and, it, and you kind of got the sense that people were a little apologetic for being <laughs> Pittsburghers, yep. right? But I actually feel like that, the tenor of that has changed within the city tremendously just in the last five or six years. Like I feel like suddenly there's a lot of institutional pride and personal pride in being a Pittsburgher that wasn't there uh, 15 or 20 years ago and I think that that message is actually starting to get out into the into the rest of the country. I think two words: direct flights. That's uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, actually, just to underline this, you know, it's very important because ours is a small lab within a large company. Uh, it's very important to have good connections with with the mothership, and uh, w without exaggeration. Uh, every, every time uh, the chief scientist of Oculus Research has come to Pittsburgh, every single time, his flight has been delayed <laughs> or canceled or, yeah. or something coming in and going out. And once he had to take an eight hour bus trip to New York to, to make that. And that, that, that really has an ongoing cost to the growth of the lab and how connected we are to the rest of the, the mothership. I, uh, I would make a couple, of, I guess, in response to um, Paul's point about about the investment um, culture here, I, I, you know, there are you know great sources of funding for for startups. Um, you know, so Innovation Works, you know, CMU, um, you know, Hannah mentioned Alpha Lab. Um, we also went through Alpha Lab, so there are there are great options. But on a national scale, for a startup to be attractive to um, to an investor, an investor and an a, at the national level, um, you know, invest, investors are doing a lot of pattern matching, and so they're looking for you know success stories because it's you know startups are so risky, it's so hard to tell who's going to be successful and and who isn't. So, you know, they're using pattern matching against you know who's been where are the really big success stories, and so you know I feel like in Pittsburgh we're just starting starting to get there, and what we need are just some really big IPOs, some really big um, in, investments in this area, and let's just like. I, I feel like that concept is, is super inspiring as a young company because I think that you know you know by by you know investing myself in my own venture but also supporting the other the other startups that are kind of in it as well um, you know if we can get some of us <laughs> up there and and uh, becoming really big companies then we can also change the the investment landscape here. Yeah, and I just I just have to emphasize that again there is um, a bit of a lack of. Uh, a larger investment community like we would see in Silicon Valley. Um, but what we do have going for us is there is this sort of trend when we go out there um, and talk to VCs and angels, they're kind of okay with having the team in Pittsburgh or on this coast um, because low cost of living, access to talent, and on that point people are more willing to stay with the company. The talent is more loyal instead of just sort of jumping around like what happens in Silicon Valley. So. Um, we do need a larger community, but part of that is also just making sure that we're connecting companies to um, VCs that are, are good fits and angels that are good fits out in uh, San Francisco or Silicon Valley. So it doesn't always have to be the company leaving and moving there, but just sort of letting everybody know that uh, it is possible to do a startup out here and also have access to capital on the other coast. Yeah, I think you, know, you talk about wanting a small set of like exemplary startups that have been really wildly successful. And I think that, for me, I felt like the Pittsburgh tech scene has really benefited from having a, a real diverse set of companies. So, like, I love that you're a small company, and, I've, and I think, like, when I talk to people about Pittsburgh and the tech scene here, it, it's not just about, like, one big company or one big success. 
It's really that there are so many other places here to come, uh, and that's what helps people b believe that, like, wow, I can come to Pittsburgh, or I can stay in Pittsburgh, uh, and make a career out of, you know, make my whole career here in Pittsburgh, right? As I go through whatever stage of life or through whatever transition, there's going to be other options here, and that that's super important. Very good. Any, I'm just about to open this up to the floor because I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Any other things? that have come up in this conversation that you guys want to emphasize or, or, or that we missed so far? Yeah, I would say that, that uh, uh, in this past week, I walked around uh, the office at Uber and I talked to people who moved to Pittsburgh from elsewhere and uh, asked them what they liked about the city. And it was interesting that the, the answer, uh, answers varied significantly. Uh, the, the older folks there talked about how it was a very affordable city, very uh, family uh, friendly, uh, strong uh, network of neighborhoods, uh, good educational opportunities. Uh, and then the younger set focused on, wow, you know, the bars, the restaurants, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the uh, museums, uh, performing arts. Uh, it, it, it seems that, that to them, Pittsburgh has this new exciting edge. And so, so it, it, it's, an, it's a great place for a lot of people, but uh, their reasons for liking it uh, vary. Very good. At this point, uh, uh, there are some mics set up uh, over there and over there. Please, if you've got a question or a comment, uh, come up to the uh, mic and uh, let's hear it. Please go ahead. Great. Super. Well, I'm a, I'm a Californian, and I moved to Pittsburgh from Silicon Valley, um, so I, I feel that. <laughs> I also jogged in California in, in, in the, the foothills, and I moved to Pittsburgh, and I've been here since 2006, and my biggest concern is the air quality. There are days when I refuse to jog because the air is so bad and I can smell it, and I've talked to other tech people in, in Pittsburgh and they share my concern. Many of them are considering leaving because of the air quality. I would love to, if you could speak to air, Pittsburgh's continue, continuing air quality problem and how it affects the tech industry here. Very good. What, have you, which, which of you folks have had experiences with employees who echo this problem? I think it's definitely an active discussion topic within the office itself, right? And we found that, you know, there are actually a bunch of these kinds of issues, transportation, air quality, um, bikeability, that are things that w within our office we get pretty passionate about. So we have, you know, we're pretty active about, for example, supporting GASP, uh, which for, for those of you who don't know is one of the strong interest groups here in the city that um, advocates for air quality improvements. And actually I've been really excited by some of the progress that they've made over the ten last 10 years. Um, but like, there's a lot, to, a lot of work to be done. Um, and so I look, you know, look forward to sort of that continued improvement. One thing I'd, I'd like to mention is we're, we're not a city which just sits on our hands when we have problems. And a couple of the uh, students and a couple of the faculty at Carnegie Mellon and the Robotics Institute have been looking at the question of how can we actually measure uh, and notice and give localized warnings about air quality. So beautiful new computer vision work uh, using a kind of tomographic approach to looking at the amount of blue scattered light, a distant, uh, distant information from cameras around the city it's actually helping us to start not only detect when things suck, but figure out exactly where the cause of the problem is. So uh, this is something where I, I hope that technology is going to help us and we're going to lead the way to help other cities as well. Yeah, and there's all, you can also now check out air quality monitors from the library, right? And I think these are the air, some of the air quality yeah. monitors, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, that actually came out of CMU Spec. as well. Yeah, Ilan Orbash's group at CMU, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, that was a really nice, nice point. All right, next question. Hi, so 
I'd like to uh, bring up Yasser's point about direct flights now to Pittsburgh. As anyone who's been here for a while knows, Pittsburgh used to be one of the busiest airports in the country. We have a phenomenal airport, phenomenal infrastructure to uh, accommodate another airline hub here. But the landing fees for airlines are actually very, very high at the county at the uh, Pittsburgh International Airport. If are, do you guys have any ideas on how you could address that at the governmental level? There are a lot of uh, community leaders here in the room, and that's one of the major factors that airlines take into account when they open up new routes and airports. That's one of the reasons that you actually see the Latrobe Airport out uh, in Latrobe getting more and more action because it has much lower landing fees, despite being very far outside the city. Yeah, so my first suggestion would be to learn to sleep on flights. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, the, uh, count, the county executives and the new commissioner of the uh, Pittsburgh airport, they are not sitting still on this. Uh, it's, it's premature to actually be able to give any good news on this, but uh, uh, folks at Carnegie Mellon, University of Pittsburgh, and the tech community have all been behind the scenes really pushing on this, and we're beginning to see progress. If we don't get progress, uh, I think a few of us will be willing um, to just start to charter bloody flights out <laughs> to San Francisco. Just one charter out on Monday morning, one charter back on Friday evenings, because uh, there's enough of us who need to do this now. We're doing massive business with Silicon Valley, and uh, we're not just going to give up and hope that someone helps us out. And this isn't just an issue for the tech sector, for the for startups, right? This is a city of Pittsburgh. Every single sector of Pittsburgh would be affected by this. The 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 need is groundswell. Everyone needs to like make this an issue and, and get it fixed. Yeah. Next question, please. I have a um, blockchain startup that operates out of Raleigh Durham, and none of our employees are from Carnegie Mellon or Pitt. But if we look to expand operations into Pittsburgh. What does that look like with getting plugged into the community and being able to source in students? Suggestions from anyone else who's an employee of a company which has decided to move an office to Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> I think actually there would be any number of local companies or heads of local companies that would be thrilled to talk to you about that opportunity. Right? There are really strong resources in the Pittsburgh area like the Pittsburgh Technology Council. Uh, I'm sure Andrew would be more than happy to uh, receive an email from you. Um, and talk about his support that he can provide to company, tech, tech companies coming into Pittsburgh. I think actually we're a pretty welcoming community, uh, and you know, as been said earlier, it's, it's genuinely true that Pittsburgh is a friendly place, right? So people are much more approachable here than I think they are in many other places. We are very much all rooting together for this. Uh, I like Kamal's suggestion. The simplest thing to remember is the Pittsburgh Technology Council, and they're very good at plugging you in so that uh, they will uh, send send calls for help out to the rest of us. Uh, and uh, that has been how a lot of business has been done here for the last decade or so. I, I have another suggestion as well, which is um, uh, uh, CMU has some excellent master's programs and PhD programs. Students are looking for internships. There are many actually interesting project-based engagements that your company could, do, could engage uh, professors and students to do. And that's a great way to start interfacing with them. Um, uh, that's what I would suggest. Maybe drop a line to a professor whose work you're interested in, give a talk at the lab, give a talk at the department. That's a great way to kind of build an engagement. And um, uh, internships particularly, that's what I would suggest that you, you work on. So. Very good. Hi. Um, as a female tech startup employee, um, and this is Inclusive Innovation Week. Um, one of the things Paul kept talking about was how to be the next Portland or the next San Francisco, but I want to be the next Pittsburgh. Um, I don't really want to. <laughs> and one of the things that I see in tech news about San Francisco and Silicon Valley is the focus on young white founders um, and male founders. So how do we as Pittsburgh make sure that we break that mold I'm not a 25 to 29 year old, but I still bust my bottom to get my startup off the ground. So how do we make sure that our boom includes everyone, not just 25 to 29 year old white people? So That's I a really good question, yeah, please. I think one of the, the easiest answers is just be the best startup you can be. Um, 
it was mentioned before, this, this concept of pattern matching. And I think uh, that's uh, probably why things uh, like supporting maybe young white men in, in, in Silicon Valley happen. Um, you know, investors are looking for what worked in the past. It's natural. Um, and I think just, you know, supporting everybody <laughs> from the, the seed stage um, all the way up to when people are ready for VC money um, and making sure that we're, we're making good connections and uh, building good businesses is the best way. Any other comments on this? Because it is really critical for our future. So I'm trying to look down the road a bit because you're not always going to be 25 to 29 year olds. <laughs> uh, you are eventually probably going to have families and children. And one big thing about Pittsburgh that worries me is the Pittsburgh school system and uh, what your opinion is of that and how you think we can improve it because we keep shutting down schools. <laughs> And we may need those schools sometime in the near future, I'm thinking. So I'm curious as to what you think on that. Great question. Any, anyone had trouble recruiting folks here because of worries about the school system, for example? So actually, I would say I have two young kids. Uh, they're about to enter school. And one of my tensions is that I want to be close to work. Um, but the schools in the particular area where work is are, are quite poor. So I have the, the question of do I go to the suburbs again and have a 40 minute commute, which means that I can't go back and forth to have a quick dinner with kids or come, come, back, and, uh, come back and forth. So it's a real concern. Um, and the other option is to have private schools, which are of course expensive and exclusionary. Um, so it's, it's definitely a concern. And it actually links back to an earlier question about air quality. Both my kids are at risk of asthma. In fact, one of them has de developed it. So it, it is, these are uh, issues. Um, uh, may, they may be like not the deciding factor, maybe they are the deciding factor, but the way on, the way on recruitment, the way, way on, I'm sure, all of our personal decisions to stay here and to grow here, for sure. I, I guess I would add, add to that just as, a, as a, 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 par a local parent of young kids where I'm thinking about the school systems a lot, um, I'm talking to my neighbors a lot about the school systems as well, and I do live right in the city. Um, I, there are actually, you know, we, we, we do have some issues that we have to tackle with the school system, but there are some very good public schools out there. Um, and, and I think that something that's happening in my neighborhood, I live in East Liberty, that I, I think is great, is that um, as, as I sift through all the information with my neighbors, we are talking about which, you know, schools, you know, we're going to be sort of going for. And then you, you, you can sort of drive local, uh, local community towards towards a choice, um, and then at least you know you have active, engaged parents in the school that you've chose, and you can really focus your attention on that specific school and, and, and trying to, to drive change that way. I'd also like to add one more thing about, in a positive note, you know, uh, with, the, uh, with my young kids, I'm, I'm an immigrant to the city and the country, and I've lived in many cities and many countries, and this is a really great place, uh, to that point of tolerance that Paul made earlier. It's, it's really been one of the decisions for me to stay here too. So that's a great, great thing about the city too. Fantastic. Uh, so I have Kamal, Tony, and Yasser. Um, it's great that you're all here and that you're creating jobs for the region. We really appreciate it. Um, that being said, your corporate headquarters are all in California. Can you all just comment for how much you all are able to support different local initiatives here in Pittsburgh? Like, I know you all probably have foundations at Facebook and Google and Uber. How much can you all support the local community here? I, I think uh, I, I'd be in a better position to answer this in about a year once some of the mm -hmm. uh, connections that we're trying to make actually uh, have some sort of bare fruition. Uh, but it's definitely been the case because of uh, the connections I have to the community here and the connections I'm building to the corporate headquarters that there are a number of initiatives, including one by Ila, who, um, uh, who Andrew just mentioned, uh, that might, it might take off, it might not, but there's at least the opportunity for the first time, right? And that's great. Yeah, I can speak uh, to this as well. With, within the office, a lot of the folks are very passionate about making Pittsburgh a successful city. Uh, we have folks who are really active in, for example, um, advocating STEM research, especially in underprivileged neighborhoods um, and communities. Uh, and as we also do a number of pretty explicit sort of outreach and grant funding uh, for different efforts. We try to focus a lot of our, um, a lot of our outreach around sort of the funding 
directed towards the digital, digital divide and STEM education. So for example, you know, our office is in Larimer and we just uh, gave $150,000 to the Larimer neighborhood group to set up free Wi-Fi in the Choice Neighborhoods area uh, that they're redeveloping. So those are, I mean, we feel like we're really part of Pittsburgh, right? And we feel that there is, you know, we feel very valued in the city. And we're very appreciative of that. And we also feel like we have some responsibility then to give back and participate in the community at large. So, so I'm sorry, I have a question over here. Over here. Oh, uh, yep. There you go. Uh, so you all are the tech leaders. You are the employers in Pittsburgh. And uh, my question is whether you all can project what your employment needs are going to be. Because in Pittsburgh, we have this uh, ongoing um, narrative. It's almost actually to the point of becoming a caricature about how much of a boom town we are. What I'm trying to find out do you project that you are actually going to have the kind of uh, employment needs and that you're going to be hiring significantly in the foreseeable future, for example, to uh, take up the building, which we have a massive build right now, particularly in the East End? Uh, can you guys speak to that? Yeah, I, uh, speaking uh, for Uber, we, uh, we are continuing to grow. Uh, we are uh, in the Strip District and uh, have uh, quite a few uh, job openings advertised, and, and it is our expectation that uh, uh, we, uh, we will continue to grow. Likewise at Google, we continue to hire strong software engineering talent and strong technical talent wherever we find it. Uh, you know, we have our building in Bakery Square, we're expanding across the street um, into Bakery Square too later this year, so uh, you know, as we are successful, we continue to grow. I want to add just another comment on that. It is a very important question, and one of the things I'm concerned about myself is we are having a boom town, and it is around technology, including health technology and other technology areas. So to have all of Pittsburgh be able to, to participate in this, it comes back to the earlier excellent question about education. It's really important that the uh, work that's going on by many uh, volunteer organizations and by the local governments uh, about actually giving all the kids in this area access to technology education. That's extremely important because uh, otherwise uh, it is just going to be consistently folks from outside coming in to benefit in these new jobs. So education is critical because I'm very confident about the future containing many technology jobs and really exciting ones which uh, affect the whole world. But I'm I'm not an expert, but I don't see the same growth for low-skilled jobs in Pittsburgh at the moment. Uh, this has been a fantastic discussion. In the breaks, uh, we will uh, continue. Please pigeonhole myself and all of our excellent panelists. Let's thank our panelists for some words of wisdom. <laughs>